The outer area is our outer rib area is called uh, Henoko, and inner area is called Aura. And this is the plant-based uh, construction area. And there are mangrove tidal flat, massive varieties areas, muddy areas, sandy areas, seagrass beds, and uh, we have dugongs here. Coral communities, seagrass beds, mangrove, tidal flood, muddy areas, sandy areas are building one big set, and all parts are necessary to support here. The, this ecosystem is biodiversity rich, however, very fragile. And today uh, we are going to focus on seagrass beds among them, and also would like to uh, gi uh, give the brief explanation of what dugong is. Um, seagrass bed, we have the largest size of seagrass bed around Okinawa Island remaining, and um, sea turtles and dugongs feed on. Uh, dugong are uh, endangered species in the red data list of Minist and Japanese Ministry of Environmental, and also designated as a Japanese natural monument. Okinawa Island is the northern limit of dugong's habitat, and three individuals are confirmed in Okinawa. Uh, research is done by Okinawa Defense Bureau, but a dugong expert, Dr. Kasuya, said um, the population estimate is more than four, less than ten. And um, please um, look at your handout 2E. The Okinawa Defense Bureau conducted its environmental impact assessment for the construction and operation of the Futenma replacement facility in this area. The Bureau's EIA predicts that considering the range of movement of the dugongs and utilization of seagrass beds as feeding grounds by the dugongs, the probability that the dugong will move to feed on the seagrass beds along the Henoko Bay area is small. There were no reports of dugong usage from 2005 through 2008. However, in 2009, the ODB's own survey reports indicates that the dugong had begun to use this area again. Since then, the usage has gradually increased of the area, and this year, from May through early July, we conducted surveys on dugong feeding trails. We found, uh, we recorded more than 150 feeding trails in the area. The area we found is right here. Um, Shuab, um, it's just uh, besides Camp Shuab, and this area falls in the temporarily restricted water area now, and people are not go allowed to go in. The temporarily restricted water areas were established in mid-July this year by both Japan Japanese and U.S. governments in order to proceed with the construction of the Futenma replacement facility to develop and implement effective measures for the future conservation of Jugom, It is particularly important to know how frequently the Jugom come to the plant construction site and what type of seagrass they prefer to feed upon. Therefore, we requested U.S. force in Japan for permission to enter and conduct research in the temporary restricted water areas. For so, and our chairman of the board of director, Akira Kameyama, stated the process and our wish in a letter to Ms. Caroline Kennedy, the ambassador of the United States of America. We sent it to her on this Tuesday. She must have received it by now. Dr. Kameyama is going to share the content with you. Now, uh, <coughs> I'll read the letter to the 
Ambassador of the United States of America. Dear Ambassador Kennedy, to begin with, uh, I'd like to express my deepest appreciation and highest respect for your significant contribution to enhancing the strong bond between our two nations. <laughs> 